Hi, we're Maddie and Nico, and we are turning this empty cargo van into this tiny home on wheels. We have no building experience, but we'll take you along each step as we transform our 2020 Ford Transit van. Hi YouTube, welcome back to our channel. In this episode of our van build series, we're gonna be going over how we installed the first components of our electrical system. This will primarily be the core of our electrical system. If you want a full rundown of our wiring diagrams and everything in our electrical system, you can check out this video, I'll link it above. By the end of this video, you should have a clear idea of how to install a DIY system in your own van. So without further ado, let's get started. So this is going to be our wire for our whole system to ground it to the chassis. And this is 2 out wire and I've got a 2 out wire lug and you're just going to put it on here. Okay, so I've already crimped this lug onto this side of the wire. We're going to leave this side of the wire open for now. These don't twist around on here once it's crimped onto the wire, once we install this side on the chassis of the van, and then once we have our systems up and we're gonna install this into the system, then we will crimp the other side on, just so that way we have it orientated facing the right direction. Right now, we're going to apply some of this heat shrink onto the wire lug to protect it. We don't have a heat gun, we just have a hair dryer. So we're gonna try that out, see how it goes. Okay, Nick goes about to make the hole for our chassis. There's actually already a hole here, but we're just gonna make it bigger. Just took some paint off so we get a good ground. We have a series of washers. So we take our 5 16th stainless steel bolt, put a washer on, and we put our lug through. We use one of these serrated lock washers, and that's gonna go through. So on the back side, you got just a stainless washer, and then a split washer, and then on top of that, on the back, we'll go the nut. Got a wrench in the back to lock it down. So there's our system ground, and the wire will come out here and connect to our negative bus bar and our shunt. So now we have everything behind the wall, which means we could put the wall up. Okay, this is our wall. It goes over our wheel well. We've kind of mapped out where we want our electrical. As you can see, there's some pencil markings. Put a picture that you can see of our electronics. You're gonna wanna make sure you leave enough space between your components for all of your wires to go. We took a picture of our components and then drew some wires on the picture to mock up where we think we will run the wires. I just need to drill some holes so we can get some wires through and then we can maybe put up this wall. The moment we've been waiting for, for weeks. We're doing a little test fit of all our holes that I just drilled. We just wanted to make sure it's not up against any framing like we've planned out. But yeah, it looks good. Next, we're building our component platform. This will hold our batteries and inverter. We measured and cut Baltic birch scraps to the height of our wheel well and used pocket hole screws and wood glue to make a table. After the platform was built, we added some wood blocks that will act as a lip for the batteries and we drilled some holes for the inverter fan to have fresh air. The inverter will also be mounted to the wall and rest on these blocks to keep it about an inch above the platform. Now that we have a plan, a platform, and a system ground, we can move on to build the core of our system. This will include our lithium batteries and our Lynx Power In, which is essentially two bus bars with spaces to add fuses. We're connecting our batteries in parallel. Right now, I'm just making our wire. I already cut and crimped this side. These are 5 16 lugs to our energy battery. So I already cut this one. It's a little too long. So I have a lug here and I just gotta mark where I need to cut this, which is about right there. 
I'll strip it back to about right here and then we'll make that crimp. For the positive side, we're gonna use a red wire and make sure it's exactly the same so our batteries charge and discharge evenly. I'm gonna take my insulation cutter. Got this on Amazon, works really well. And I'm just gonna measure about there. Kind of set the blade for this thing just deep enough where I can just pull this back and the rest of the rubber splits. Just kind of got to bend it off like that. Nice twist. So our positive battery connection needs to be exactly the same as this one. I'm just marking on my ruler exactly where to cut it. Next step is going to be Crimping, here's our crimping tool. I'm just adding another 5 16 lug on the end. I'm trying to be sure to make this side match up with this side in terms of angle like this. I just want it to be flat. I crimp it down with my tool. Just make sure it doesn't come off. You always want to pull on it. Make sure the connection is good. Now that we have both of these made, it's time to heat shrink them. I already cut my little one inch strips of heat shrink. Make sure you use the heat shrink with adhesive inside of it. Turn this on. When doing this, you want to see the adhesive of the heat shrink ooze out onto the wire so you know it's adhered properly. We're turning our Lynx power in into what is essentially a Lynx distributor minus the computer parts. So in order to make it so the Lynx power in can hold fuses, you're going to need four M8 bolts. These are one and a quarter long, four M8 lock washers, 12 M8 washers, eight M8 nuts, because they're all stainless steel. After removing the cover plate, you can take off all the plastic retaining clips. Okay, so our first step is we're going to put the bolts facing up just like so. Then just a regular washer. And retaining clip. And what you didn't see earlier is that the retaining clip is held in place by four screws. And last step, I'm going to put four more washers and four of the nuts. And then you're gonna just tighten those down. Not too tight, because it's plastic. Voila. So I saw a video of some guy attaching his shunt and also the main on off switch just directly to the Lynx power in. Kind of like that idea because we don't have to buy anything. We just have to drill these holes out to match this and also those. They're just a little bit wider. And this plastic holder that we want to utilize because it'll provide us a spacer on the back. It doesn't fit in there. So what I'm gonna do is take this off and then I'm just gonna cut a straight line off of it. Because what's blocking is this piece here and this little lip. 
And so my next step is to drill out these holes to make it so these can fit through because they're not big enough right now. After screwing the Lynx power into a board so it won't move, we used a drill press with a 13 30 seconds bit to widen the existing holes. Here's our bolt. It goes right there. So the next step in this is I have this tiny little file. I'm just removing the burrs off these flat sides. You want to make sure it's a nice, level, smooth surface for your connections to be good. Oh, that side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 10 out of 10. We're using some rubbing alcohol and are cleaning up the metal. <laughs> <laughs> You also want to clean up these connections. And on the back side of this, you don't need a lock wash or anything because it has little teeth. So that should be enough to hold it forever. So now we're going to connect our master disconnect to our positive side of essentially our bus bar. Now I'm just making a spacer for this plastic piece. This will go underneath here. And there's a slight gap on the bottom here. And I just found this piece of wood that is just about the perfect size. The shunt came with these little screws. I'm gonna mount that to the plastic plate like so. It's worth mentioning that the P negative side of the shunt gets mounted to the bus bar. putting the battery plus cord in before we attach this to the wall. Give it a little tug, make sure it's in there. She's in there. The battery plus wire, this red wire, comes up from the bottom. There's a little groove right here that the wire goes through. Voila. Now <laughs> we're starting to get this, slowly but surely. Good morning, YouTube. It's the next day. We need to now ground our Lynx distributor. Here's our ground wire. We did make it way too long. We're gonna ground on this middle pole right here. So I just need to cut this back, put a lug on it, heat shrink it. Okay, and lastly, I just need to hook up our positive wire for our shunt. You can go on any of these positives. Okay, I'm just gonna put it here. Then we quickly mounted our DC to DC charger to the wall. We'll have a full video explaining how we connected the DC to DC charger. Okay, so right now I am making our battery cable runs to our on off switch, which is just over here and to our shunt. I'm using two watt cable. They need to be exactly the same, both positive and negative, just like these ones were. So I'm just figuring out our route. First step is I put a lug on the end of this positive wire. It's gonna go back here and right here we're gonna put our A&L fuse. 
So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna cut my wire right here, add another lug, and then continue on so I don't have to cut out any wire and waste any. All right, so I figured out the length of our positive run. I don't have the 3 8 lug at this end, but I can still cut this black one the same length. What you wanna do is you want your ANL fuse in line and it's acting as the full wire. I'm just gonna cut my black wire here so they're nice and even. Just a little tip, I just put a bolt through both the ends of these lugs just so they hold in place and they're equal. So I just got our positive from the battery into our master switch and our negative from the battery to our shunt. I'll tighten down. Lastly, I just need to mount our ANL fuse just with screws. Alright, I just use this guy in the up port right here to turn the batteries on. This thing was bright blue, that's how you know. Something to note about battery cables is that the positive and negative cables should go on opposite terminals of either battery, like shown. The reason for doing this is so both batteries drain equally at the same time and you're not overworking one battery over the other. And we're gonna try turning on our system for the very first time, so hopefully nothing blows up. We'll cross our fingers. Four. It's powered. What's it say? Zero percent. Oh god. Thank you for watching our electrical video. Stay tuned for next week where we'll be putting part two up. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and a comment below and make sure you subscribe to our channel.